I'll end up doing this to all of the surfaces. This was real rough. There was exposed wood. Anyway, this gets rid of the marks from the applicator and uh, prepares the surface for rubbing out. You may very well need to add more shellac to the uh, rough areas. Doesn't look like much. It's a matter of how much we have left. Anyway, we're going to do that to the whole top and the sides. Steel wool, 2 0. So this is double O. It was really rough right here. It's less than 24 hours after I've done the first go round. I'm not looking for perfection. Pretty good. Now up here, I haven't broken the shine from the, uh, when you apply this stuff, it glosses really well. With the typical French polish or some of the various processes go through a rub-out stage with uh, pumice. I use another rub-out product. It's easy to acquire and really works well. Pumice contains an easy-to-use carrier meaning that it uh, starts as a usable abrasive and as you rub it, it gets finer and finer. So you can see what I'm doing here. A lot of this, what this does is it takes out any of the imperfections that existed in the finish below the shellac. They've telegraphed up, made the shellac high in that area. Ouch. So, this is part of a hand rubbed finish, whether it's lacquer or shellac. Anyway, we'll finish this up. And then we're going to add a few more layers of shellacue. So, as I say, this is like a modified French polish where you're applying the shellac with a uh, fine textured piece of cloth. Especially I'm applying it to the border here. <laughs> I need to do that. You can see where it's going. You can see where it's been. There. When it starts to drag, you need more stuff. This process involves what we call cut. It cuts into the previous layer. There we go. 
go. A hit there. You got to overlap it before the previous one dries. Viola. Well, we turn on the fan. Let's see if we can. We got a fan here. And we turn that on, tilt that up, and all like that. Come back in 10, 20 minutes. So, I put three coats on the neck. And there's the, uh, the body. Sure is shiny. Uh, that's kind of a glaze that happens with when the shellac dries. So, 42 hut. This guy has uh, problems right here. There's a nick right here and a nick right here. So, we're going to fill these with the same dust that we did yesterday and then sand this until we get rid of these owies and put a faux rosewood finish on there. So, I'm just going to fill these dings with my process. Plastic wood. Just going to... We put the drop, the drop, the drop. That's a big drop on there, boy. There is a thing where if you use water as a part of the equation, you can accelerate the drying of this stuff immensely. But it's already pet. the the act of combining with the wood dust makes it pretty quick. And it sticks to things that are organic, like skin. Weathered eye. Pretty ugly, doesn't it? Right now. Yeah. That's where it's soaking into the wood. What will I do? I don't know. Let's put some more on there. There you go. Look like dark wood. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Whatever happened there. Anyway, we're making a faux rosewood peg head overlay. And I will uh, play with this for a while. Let it dry. And play with it some more. You can see where we're going though. It's starting to look pretty rad. Yes, sir. Gotta get down in here. This is play. Learn how to play. 
play and creativity grew up together. And they helped each other out. Okay. Well, it's starting to look pretty, uh, pretty good. I don't know if we're seeing it only in reflected light. Can't see anything that way. There. I don't know if we can see that or not. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah it'll look good when it's done. So that's after about uh, five, six go arounds of shellac. I'm going to go back to the uh, back now. So here's the finished peg head. It uh, looks well worn, old, but in fairly good shape. Brass tuners. Yeah, this is rubbing compound turtle wax. Use it all the time. See what happens. Some of this will not go away until we do something else. We'll see. That one went away. We got one. This one will be hard. Might want a little steel wall on it. There, got another one. Some of it, the shadow will remain because it's actually changed the wood from light exposure. Anyway, we're going to rub out the top and see what it looks like. So, it's not as nice as I hope, but it's pretty nice. So, there's the uh, shadow. Somewhere in here is a crack. There's a scratch alongside the crack, but that's not the. Uh, it's pretty much invisible. Anyway, we're going to move on to the headstock. Have to find the shininess angle. Here we go. That glaze is going to be broken with some steel wool. And then we'll rub it out, even though it's been less than 24 hours. Risky business. This is a single edge uh, razor blade. It has no protective coating or tape on it. You hold it in your hand. And uh, scrape off hundred years worth of residue many times when the guitar is built this is not masked off and the factory finish is rather light it was probably one or two coats of shellac 
possibly lacquer, depending on. So, you can see it's, here's a, see if we can do another little piece here. Pretty shiny, ain't it? good at it. You simply use your finger as the stop for the depth. And you can start to go relatively quickly. And again, we're not after perfection. So we go around the whole guitar. It's just a part of the process. In some cases, when it finishes original, you're not going to do this. This one has got a layer of crud on it, and we're doing the 100-year anniversary build, and no, you don't hurt your fingers if you know what you're doing. shellac fades into the original finish this way too. So we steal away everything and blend. Sort of a light. compound do the entire side this will be the end of making it shiny can make it shiny and shiny and shiny There you begin to see the reveal of this area right here. That looks pretty good. And then you can look real close. It looks like walnut. You can see the, uh, the swipe marks of the original foe. Finish made the grain and the brown and black. The black looks like grain, the brown. Anyway, it's pretty nice. Sorry about that. Well, there it is. It sounds and plays really nice. action is extremely low. There is very low and scary low. This one is a scary low. Ooh. Now, if you look at that finish on the back up close, it's full of little defects that were in the back from a hundred years of use. They're still there. But the thing looks like it's been well taken care of, even though it was unplayable when I got it. Um, we're going to do another one. <laughs> 